In this video, you're going to see an almost foolproof way to get the correct power of contact lenses that you're fitting. Welcome back. If you haven't seen it, the first video in this series shows you how to work out the power of the lenses to put in once you know the refraction from your autorefractor. Also, please subscribe to my channel, then you'll be notified when I make my next video. You can comment below and remember to give a like if you enjoy it. I'd really like to get your feedback, so don't be shy. I'm going to show you a great overfraction technique that will get you the correct power of the lenses most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. My technique makes it easy for your patient to be reliable and not make you give them too much minus or not enough plus. First things first, I never use an occluder. I like to use a plus 150 sphere instead of an occluder. I find it gives me a much better control of the accommodation and gets the right answer more reliably. Trouble is that it's easy to get a bit confused when you're starting this technique. Making the lens easily identifiable really helps. This is how I did mine. I hope you enjoy this. I really enjoyed doing it. I thought you'd enjoy that. Uh, it's amazing what skills you need to uh, test people's eyes these days, isn't it? This step is not essential, but helps you stop getting confused which lens is the blurring occluder. Let's have a look at my technique now. To set the scene, I've inserted some lenses into our patient's eyes. Out of interest, our patient today is my friend Peter Hong, who is one of the few optoms in the United Kingdom to have an MBE for services to optometry. This is him collecting it at Buckingham Palace. He's a fantastic guy and I think you'll agree he looks very, very smart in this picture. As you can see, I deliberately overcorrected his right eye by plus one and undercorrected his left eye by minus 050. As you know, it's common for your autorefractor to under plus hypermetropes and over minus myopes. So the right eye is a reconstruction of this situation. The left eye will demonstrate uh, adding minus lenses, which, as you'll see, must be treated entirely differently from adding plus lenses. If you're interested in what you're doing to the focus of the chart on the back on the retina inside the eye, the top diagram is a side view of the retina. In the right eye, you can see the light rays are focusing behind the retina. So we need to add plus to get the focus onto the retina. In the left eye, the focus is in front of the retina. So we need to add minus to move the focus back to the retina to get good vision. The lower diagram shows how big the blur circle is on the retina. In simple terms, the bigger it is, the more incorrect the lenses are. Now that we've set the scene, let's roll the video. I'm going to stop the video on first viewing to give you some technique tips that I think are important. Then at the end, you'll get to see the whole video right the way through. So let's start. Right, you know, there we go. I'm just going to put this in here. There we go. And is that a bit blurry? I always test the right eye first. A nice habit to get into, I think. Covering up the opposite eye, as I did in this case, to the blurring occluder is essential. It's so easy to get confused if the eye with the blurring occluder in isn't blurry. It can really mess things up. There's no need to measure the acuity. Just check that it's blurry. If it's not, add more plus until it is. 
Let's continue with the refraction. Yeah, and just have a look at that line there. Mm -hmm. Always choose a line that the patient can easily see. Don't go too small. This makes it easy for the patient to check for differences. My favorite line is the 612 line, which I used in this case. Let's continue. And if you look at that line there, is it better with this one or better with that? It's with, uh, with, with. Better with? Yep. And then. So this is the essence of the technique. We always show half diopter lenses. If the patient says it's better, then change the sphere by a quarter. It's hard to see a quarter difference after all. The biggest problem is that when you show minus 025, the patient can easily accommodate, whereas it's less likely through a half diopter. I sometimes show quarters at the very end, but mostly not. I sometimes use the red and green right at the end as well. Let's continue and keep looking there. Better with this one or without. Better with. Mm -hmm. This is an important technique with plus lenses. Always put the new lens in before taking the old lens out. This stops the patient accommodating when you change the lenses. This is only done with the plus lenses, definitely not the minus lenses, as you'll see later. I like to call this technique lens shuffling. Let's continue with the refraction. And better with this one or without? With. Mm -hmm. That's good. And better with this one or without? Try again. With. I hope you're noticing that I'm showing the lenses quickly with a repeat soon afterwards. The actions are quick and precise. After a while, the patient gets to know your technique. Hold the lenses in just long enough to get a good response. Let's continue. Mm -hmm, that's great. And better with this one. Ooh, um, better without it. Mm -hmm. And better with this one or without? Well, without. Mm -hmm. Did you notice the slight difference in my presentation times? It's quicker for minus, so you don't encourage the patient to accommodate. I find that 1.3 seconds is good for plus and 0.9 of a second good for minus. Although measuring the presentation times is impossible without using video analysis. Basically, don't leave minus lenses in too long. It induces the accommodation. Let's continue. Now let's swap this lens over to the other eye now. And that's a bit blurry there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and keep looking at that line there. Better with this one. That's, that's better without. Uh -huh and better with this one better with uh -huh. and better with this one or without better with uh -huh. as you can see changing minus lenses is totally different to changing plus lenses minus lenses are switched otherwise you'll induce accommodation this is the opposite to plus lenses which are shuffled if you remember let's continue with the refraction and um, better with that one or without um, it's better without mm -hmm. And again, better with that one. It's without. Oh, great. So we just swap back over to the other eye now. And that's blurry there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, keep looking up there now. Um, better with this one or without? Well, without. Oh, oh. And better with that one. Without. Mm -hmm. Let's swap over to the other eye again. And um, better with this one or without? Without. Good. And again, better with that one. Without. Great. It's a good idea to double check your results at the end by switching the blurring occluder from eye to eye until both plus lenses and minus lenses are worse. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed seeing this very quick and reliable technique to get the correct power. It'll give you the power with the maximum plus and the minimum minus, which is what we want after all. Let's just run it through again so you can see the whole thing through. I've speeded it up a bit, so we'll go through the clinical tips again afterwards. Right, you know, there we go. I'm just going to put this in here. There we go. Yeah. And, that blurry? Cover up. Yep. and just have a look at that line there. Mm -hmm. line. And if you look at that line there, is it better with this one or better with that? With, uh, with, with. Better with? Yep. And then keep looking there. Better with this one. Or without better with mm -hmm. and uh, good shuffling and better with this one or without with mm -hmm. that's good plus lenses are shuffled remember and better with this one or without again with mm -hmm. that's great And better with this one. Ooh, um, better without it. Mm -hmm. And better with this one or without. See the quicker presentation. Now let's swap this lens over to the other eye now. And that's a bit blurry there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And looking at that line there. And better with this one. That's, that's better without. Mm -hmm. And better with this one. Better with. Mm -hmm. And better with this one or without. Better with. Mm -hmm. See the minus lenses are switched, they're not shuffled, remember that. And um, better with that one or without. It's better without. Mm -hmm. And again, better with that one. Just without. Oh, great. So we'll just swap back over. Tut tut. To There's that error other again. <laughs> and that's blurry there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And Should have shuffled uh, that. Looking up there now. Um, better with this one or without? Well, without. Mm -hmm. And better with that one. Without. Mm -hmm. Let's swap over to the other eye again. Uh, it's good to check each and, eye again, isn't um, it? Better with this one or without. I keep doing this without. for quite some time yeah. sometimes to relax the accommodation. And again, better with that one. Without. Great. So, the clinical tips with this great technique are Firstly, check plus 150 is blurred by covering the opposite eye. Secondly, Use an easy line, 612 I like to use. Thirdly, show a half, change by a quarter. Fourth, shuffle plus lenses. Fifth, show lenses quickly with a repeat. Sixth, show minus lenses quickly. Seven, switch minus lenses. Eight, repeat until both plus 050 and minus 050 is worse. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, then you'll be notified when I make my next one. See you next time.